Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and I want to thank you for tuning in today and I got something special for you. We got some go fast parts that we're going to take apart. In particular, I recently purchased a Jackson Racing Supercharger, possibly to go on the Type R, but I want to take it apart and look inside because, well, they haven't made these in about 15 years, so there's nothing new available. So I want to look inside, see what kind of shape it's in, and also give you a little tutorial on how root style superchargers work. Check it out. What I'm about to disassemble and show you is virtually mechanically identical to this root style supercharger that is on this Terminator engine in this 2004 Mustang Cobra. As you can see, it's belt dripping uh, from the crankshaft of the engine, which in turn spins the rotors and compresses the air, forcing more air into the engine and uh, creating more power. So this is what it looks like when it's mounted on the engine, not the one that I'm gonna be disassembling. That actually mounts onto a B-series engine. But the internals and everything, as I said, are virtually the same. You can see that this is really just a smaller version of what's on this car. This type of supercharger is referred to as a Roots style supercharger. Uh, in addition to the Roots style of supercharger, there is also what's called known as a centripetal supercharger, which you can really think of as a belt-driven turbocharger. It's probably the easy, easiest way I can, I can uh, describe it to you. I'll throw a picture of one up there now. Also belt-driven by the engine, but uh, not normally bolted to the top of the engine like this root style is here on this Mustang. Now my intention, if this supercharger is viable, is to bolt it onto this B18C5 in my 2000 Integra Type R, and it will go on in place of the intake manifold that you see here. This is the top of the manifold. This is what will bolt onto the cylinder head here. Uh, the fuel injection rail will bolt on up here and here's provisions for four different fuel injectors. Uh, the belt is actually gonna be driven off of a uh, pulley off the alternator. Let me grab that for you. You end up replacing the alternator pulley with this, uh, which has provisions for two belts. One belt goes to the crankshaft and then the other belt will go up and drive this pulley on the supercharger. I believe the idle air control valve will fasten here, but this is something I want to check and verify right now. Um, this is something like a wastegate, if you will, and I want to make sure that it's working before I really get into this. This valve works off of intake vacuum, so during periods of high intake vacuum, say you let off the throttle, you're going to shift gears, this opens up and bleeds off all the boost because you don't want to be boosting while you're decelerating. So that's what this valve is for. And if it's not working properly, it can bleed off boost. So it's, it's really important that this valve works as intended. And as you can see, it's run right here to intake vacuum. All right, I hooked a vacuum pump up to it and I'll just pump it up and we'll watch to see if this moves and holds. So far that looks good. It moved, it's holding. And it opens up, so all right. Well, that's working like it should. Before I get too far into this, I believe this supercharger is an Eaton M62 supercharger. I believe the M62 stands for that it moves 62 cubic feet of air per revolution. Now, the first thing I did when I was looking at this before I bought it was I took this pulley and I rotated it and I listened and I felt it. But listening to it, it sounds good. And I don't feel any notchiness that could indicate a bad bearing or anything, so I was very encouraged to find that part of it. And just an FYI, uh, Jackson Racing made these kits, I think, for Miatas and uh, you know some other vehicles as well. And I think it's just this supercharger bolted onto whatever intake manifold, and this one happens to fit uh, the Honda B series. But you can see that you could dismount this from here and mount it onto a manifold like this one is. So just an FYI on that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna remove this portion here. I believe there may be a chamber here that's filled with oil. Here's a plug on the side. Uh, so there may be some oil leakage when I do this, but what I'm really after is these rotors on the inside. I wanna get a look at those and see what kind of shape that they're in. If they look good, then we're golden. If not, well, we may have to come up with another plan. Looks like just these 10 millimeter fasteners hold this on. Grabbed a couple of rags in case this gets messy. Okay, cool, it looks like these are all the same length.
The guys at Top Fuel have these apart in seconds. <laughs> I've seen them do it. And there's the oil. And it's okay, because I was definitely going to change the oil in this thing. All right, so the pulley goes through the housing into this with these three holes that go onto these three dowels and drive that assembly. Ooh, what a unique smell. This is special uh, supercharger oil. All right, so that's part one there. There we go. Now we're moving. Okay, this is the business right here. These are the rotors. And this is where the magic happens. This is what compresses the air that goes into the engine. And you can see these are, well, they're old. So, uh, but as these rotate, they force air through this opening inside here and down into the intake. So like I said, this is the business and the clearance between this and the inner wall of the supercharger and between these two rotors is critical to its operation, not to mention the bearings that are down inside the body uh, that attach to this. So what caused the wear on these rotors? And if you look at this closely, you might notice that there's a lot more scoring down towards the bottom here than there is up here. And what that would be an indication of is that the bearings on the inside of this case in the back down in here um, have worn out and allowed these things to move. The tolerances between these two rotors are very close. I think it's three thousandths or something like that. It's, it's super close tolerances, so they're almost touching. So any variance or any wear in these bearings is gonna manifest with this coming into contact with the inside of the supercharger here. So I'm kind of, on the fence right now as to whether or not I can, I found a company where I can source uh, a new rotor assembly. Also, I can get new bearings for the drive assembly and everything and new bearings for the inside of this. Uh, and the rotors have a, spe a special coating on them and everything else, and it would be ready to go. My concern is for what's going on inside of here and this scoring. So if, if that's something that is, well, if I can reuse that or not, I honestly don't know. And I don't have the tools to machine or deal with uh, what's happening inside here either. So I'm not so certain that just throwing in a new rotor assembly is the way to go with this. I'm actually considering sending this whole assembly to that company and having them look it over and tell me one way or another of whether or not it's salvageable. But it's to be expected on an older used unit like this. Like I said, they haven't made these in 15 years, so this is likely been on more than one engine. And when you put a supercharger on an engine, do you, do you drive it like a grandma? Probably not. All right, here's the inside. Uh, this is the passage that leads into the intake and that is the inlet coming from, say, the throttle body. Uh, there are needle bearings that these rotors ride in down at the bottom here, but I'm sure you can see this is well worn. And it is cause for some concern. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of time and effort put into uh, mounting this to the engine and making sure that the engine will work with it. And I wanna be sure that it's actually gonna work out. One of the cool things about superchargers is if you want them to make more boost, you just change the pulley. Um, the supercharger I bought came with two different pulleys. Here's the larger one here, and here's the smaller one here. And the smaller pulley, pulley spins the assembly faster, thus making more boost. Um, I actually may go with this larger pulley just because I don't necessarily want to run a high boost for this. I just want to help the engine along uh, in lower RPM is really what I'm looking to do. Another way to get more power out of the supercharger in addition to making or installing a smaller pulley on it is to install a larger crank pulley. So if this pulley is larger, that also makes the uh, supercharger pulley spin faster. So in this case, a, cop a popular upgrade 
to get more boost is to install a CRV crank pulley, which is this larger one here on the right. Uh, so this larger pulley will spin the supercharger faster as well. I got a little ahead of myself when I took this apart and went straight for the rotors, but what I could have done uh, initially is removed the intake from the supercharger. And that's probably what I should have started with. And to do that, there are those two Allens, and I believe there's more down in here. Well, that was nice of it to come out like that. Fine, stay there. There's also this hose. I know it's tool abuse, sorry. So this is the intake manifold portion. There's that bolt that I couldn't get. And this is the supercharger. And I believe they use these in several different kits for several different vehicles. Dog air is optional. One last piece that goes to the throttle body. Well, I thought that was 10 millimeter. Let's try 3 8 There we go. Good, my gasket stayed with this. All right. Well, that's it right there. The heart and soul of everything. I don't want to send it away with this pulley on it. So I'm going to remove it and install the other pulley. While I'm at it though, there's some damage here that I'm just going to try to address once I get this off. I'm just going to try to smooth that out a little bit. Well, now we know how this comes off. It's a little plastic, it feels plastic piece that goes in here. A little plastic spacer. I think this is similar to a GM 3800. And what happens is, is this will wear out. And when it does, it'll make a knocking noise. Well, when this pulley got put on, these little metal shavings and things tell the tale of why. This is what it was. So I'm not using this pulley anyway, because like I said, I wanted to go for lower boost. So I'll be using this larger one, which is not damaged. Yeah, that is truly unfortunate. But I believe I can come in with my uh, sanding disc and shave this down a bit. And it will, of course, get all cleaned and serviced before it goes all back together. This is what you get if you want vintage go fast parts. Based on this machining here, this is a balanced assembly. And given the RPMs that it's living at, probably a good idea. And then obviously when this goes back together, these need to fit onto these ends. Hello, Mr. Ant. You see him? <laughs> uh, these need to fit onto these ends. So you might have to rotate it around a little bit to get it to go together like it should. There it goes. If I remember right, yeah, the witness marks say these go here.
I think this should be able to smooth things out. Not worried about any of the metal bits or anything. All of this is getting reconditioned. Please keep that in mind. Looks better than when I started. That's all I was going for. This will be buried down in the edge of the apartment. You won't even really see it. Because I can show you now, so this is the business end as this thing works. So as this spins, you can see how it's moving the air through there in that opening. Now, like the turbocharger on my Fairmont, the enemy of all of this is heat. And in the case of the supercharger, I talked about it. Like I said, as the air heats up, it heats up these metal parts. And then what happens is it will make it harder for this pulley to spin. In fact, I did some research on this and a lot of people were shredding belts. Well, this is not a very wide belt. It's a very small belt. It's really an alternator belt, if that. Also, it's, it's ribbed. If you look at top fuel dragsters that use superchargers that use a very similar design to this, they have like a six, eight inch wide belt and it's cogged. And the reason for that is they don't want to lose any power because the belt is slipping. So the, the hotter this gets, the harder this is going to be for the engine to turn. The belt's the weak link in the chain. It'll start to slip. And once it starts to slip, it heats up and then it could break shortly after that. And I don't really want that. Now they did come up with a solution for this. Um, there's a heat exchanger out there for these units somewhere, but like this unit, they haven't been made in several years and maybe I'll be able to find one and maybe I'll go with that. But my strategy is actually modeled after a vehicle that I was a caretaker of years ago. And that was a 1998 Type R, Integra Type R that had a Jackson Racing Supercharger on it. And what he did was he didn't run a lot of boost. I think eight PSI max. And I don't really feel that you have to run a lot of boost. All I'm trying to do here is give myself a little more bottom end torque. Um, this engine makes great power at like 5,000 RPM and above, but below that it's a little weak. So if I'm trying to get from cone to cone, say on an autocross course, I'd like to have a bit more bottom end torque to get going. And that's the philosophy behind what I'm doing with the supercharger. And my thought is if I don't go with high boost, even if I don't run a heat exchanger, I should be okay. And I'm also going with this over a turbocharger because the exhaust manifolds on turbochargers and things usually necessitate negating the air conditioning or taking the air conditioning off the car. I want to drive this car around and I like having my air conditioning. It's on there now. Um, this bolts to the intake and doesn't have anything to do with the air conditioning. So I'm probably be okay. This is the box of stuff that came with my supercharger. And then I asked what this was. And uh, I was told methanol injection. Now what this can also do is this can help cool things down so I can run higher boost in the application. I'm not sure if I want to go here though, but this is also an option for helping keep the temperatures down. Now you've had a look inside the supercharger and how they actually work. Now what I do from here, well, we'll find out right now. I'm just sort of gathering parts. I'm not really going to dive into this build until sometime later this year after I have all my parts and everything gathered up. And uh, also it's got new tires on it and I've been having a lot of fun with it driving it this summer. So there's that. <laughs> I don't want to take away my fun until, uh, well, there's no fun to be had if the weather turns bad. Anyway, if you have automotive questions, I ask that you head to air at the car I'll link that in the description along with additional information on this type of thing. If you want to uh, explore it further, I hope this information was helpful to you. Please like comment, subscribe, share the video of the world. Appreciate it. When you do that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you next time.